Okay, here's take one of the intro. Hey, this is Charlie from 4A Music, and today I'll be talking about live microphone technique. This video is decidedly geared towards vocalists, but all of these tips are generally applicable to anyone using a microphone for live sound amplification. There are a number of reasons why you'll want to own and use your own microphone. Number one, you'll quickly get used to how your specific microphone works and feels, which will hopefully lead to more confidence and comfort when performing. Two, it demonstrates to those around you that you're serious and prepared, and you'll never be worried about being covered for a rehearsal or performance. Three, it's simply practicing good hygiene, which is critical now more than ever. Sharing microphones is sharing germs. There's nothing more to it than that. So if you're gonna use your own microphone, how do you decide which mic to purchase? There are two types of microphones commonly used for live sound. Dynamic microphones are the most common mics used because they often are less expensive, easier to use, and are less likely to break down. Dynamic mics pick up sound waves using a moving coil magnetic diaphragm, a rugged, versatile mechanism that reliably captures sound even at high pressure levels. The Shure SM58 is touted as the most, the most popular, popular handheld, handheld dynamic, dynamic microphone, microphone in the world, in the world. and is our recommendation for anyone's first microphone. The Shure SM58 is extremely durable, will work with any sound system, and goes for just under $100. The other kind of common microphone are condenser microphones. Condenser microphones, which come in two basic configurations, large and small diaphragm, can also be used in live settings, though are a bit less common than dynamic microphones, particularly for rehearsals or smaller venues. Condenser mics have a thin conductive diaphragm that sits close to a metal backplate. This configuration works like a capacitor, wherein sound pressure vibrates the diaphragm, which in turn changes the capacitance to produce the audio signal. This delicate mechanism improves fidelity, making these mics ideal for recording in the studio, but also more susceptible to damage. It's important to note that these microphones also require power to function, so you'll need a mixer or direct box with phantom power, which is DC electric power transmitted through microphone cables. Phantom power can be turned on and off and is often labeled on mixers as 48 V. The Neumann KMS-105 is a super cardioid condenser microphone known for its crystal clear highs and deep lows. And it's our recommendation for any vocalist looking to upgrade their sound quality from a Shure SM58. Now, I mentioned that the Neumann KMS-105 is a super cardioid microphone, which refers to the microphone's polar pattern. The polar pattern describes how the microphone picks up sound, showing specifically where the mic listens spatially, and conversely, which positions are blocked. Cardioid mics, like the Shure SM58, capture everything in front and block everything else. This front focus pattern will let you point the mic to a sound source and isolate it from unwanted ambient sound, making it ideal for live performance and other situations where noise reduction and feedback suppression are needed. Super or hyper cardioid microphones, like the Neumann KMS-105, have the same front directionality, but have a narrower area of sensitivity compared to cardioids. This results in improved isolation and higher resistance to feedback. Because of their enhanced ability to reject noise, you can use these for loud sound sources, noisy stage environments, or even untreated recording rooms. On the flip side, back rejection is a bit compromised, so you'll have to position unwanted sounds, like stage monitors and drum kits, on the dead spot sides. One final reminder that in addition to purchasing your own microphone, you'll also want to have an XLR cable with you at all times. We recommend avoiding the absolute cheapest options if possible for reliability's sake, and getting one that's at least 20 feet long. Partly because of the aforementioned polar patterns of microphones, the proximity, alignment, and handling of your microphone can vastly affect sound quality. The proximity effect is a change in the frequency response of a directional pattern microphone that results in an emphasis on lower frequencies. 
Depending on the microphone design, proximity effect may result in a boost of up to 16 dB or more at lower frequencies. This phenomenon can be used at times for effect, for instance, if you're singing bass in a vocal group. But generally speaking, holding the microphone too close to your mouth will result in a muddy sound, where the low end of your tone will overpower the higher frequencies. Although every microphone is different, to avoid this effect, hold the microphone two to three finger widths away from your mouth. On the flip side, you should avoid holding the microphone too far away from the sound source. This creates two potential significant problems. One, the opposite extreme of the proximity effect will be present, and you will lose the low end, possibly creating a tinny sound. And two, moving out of the polar pattern of the microphone reduces its ability to register and amplify your sound. Vocalists who constantly move their microphone around are the bane of live sound engineers. The folks that are desperately trying to make you and the music sound good and balanced. All this being said, it is sometimes advisable to move the microphone away from your mouth slightly when singing loudly, to regulate or balance the dynamics. But try to limit this only to significantly louder phrases and don't overdo it. The alignment of the microphone is also important. Finding the sweet spot of the mic, usually right down the barrel of the handle, will produce the most accurate, full sound. Again, if you sing outside the polar pattern of your microphone, it will simply not work as intended. Finally, how you hold the microphone can either distort your sound, be visually distracting, or both. The general rule is, don't cover the mic with your hand unless it's a creative decision. And then, by all means, do your thing. Avoiding pops. Plosive consonants, such as P, B, and T, can create a distorted sound that results when an air blast from your mouth goes into the microphone. This is typically more of an issue when recording, but can pop up from time to time in live sound, particularly in situations where quiet sound needs to be amplified a lot. For example, a soft speaker or singer performing in a large space. There are three basic ways to avoid pops if and when they become an issue. First, use a pop filter like this or this. Uh, these physically eliminate this explosive burst of air. They can also be used in outdoor venues to reduce wind sound. Number two is to hold or position the microphone so that it's slightly misaligned. Even though I know I said before that that was bad, it's cool as a lesser of two evils here. And third, reduce this plosive effect at the source by reducing the amount of air used in plosive consonants, which is something you can practice by singing or talking with your hand an inch or so away from your mouth. Pa 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 da 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 pa 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 ta 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 pa 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 pa. And finally a few general tips to pump up your confidence when using a microphone. Practice on mic as much as possible in the configuration you plan to perform with, even if that means not being connected to amplification. This seems pretty obvious, but it's something that most people just don't do because it can feel awkward or inconvenient. But the microphone is as much an element of your visual and sound setup as anything else. And confidence and skill using a microphone definitely contributes to the quality of performance, whether the audience is consciously aware of it or not. Generally speaking, it's a good thing if neither you nor the audience is spending time thinking about your microphone technique. Finally, although it can be easier said than done, trust feeling above sound. Every room and setup will sound different, and often you may not have ample time to sound check and get dialed in with the sound system. So trust the kinesthetics of correct singing and microphone technique above the sound you're hearing on stage. For example, if it feels like you're singing or speaking loudly, don't push your voice if you're not hearing yourself. At best, this can lead to bad vocal sounds, and at worst, you could develop habitually bad technique or even injure your voice. And that's it for live microphone technique. Any questions or thoughts are welcome in the comments below. And if you happen to think this video is cool, consider showing your support by giving it a like or subscribing to our channel. This has been Charlie for 4 a Music. Thanks for watching. Uh, one quick bonus idea. 
is that you may have noticed in some of the B-roll that uh, most of my microphones have a little blue tape around them. And this is just so that they don't get mixed up with other mics when they're all hanging out together. So if you have a little electrical tape or some other way to mark them, it's something I recommend. <laughs>